So today, I'd like to go over the difference between Warp and Actix Web. Now, this video, uh, or at least this topic, is a suggestion from a fan of the channel. Uh, thank you, thank you for the suggestion. And I looked into it, and at first I thought there wasn't going to be anything really here to compare, because one's small, one's big, and yada, yada, yada. But when I started looking into it, I realized that they both do more or less the same thing in terms of functionality, and the major difference between them is just presentation. And I'm going to spend this video just to find that argument. Here we go. All right, so to start this off, I'm going to pull up the Crates.io page for both frameworks, and I'm going to look at the features and compare and contrast. So let's do it. Here's Warp, and here's Actix Web. Actix Web. I, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, but there's the other one. So we scroll down, we come down to this feature section, and let's just do a quick comparison. Let's start from warp. Path routing and parameter extraction, okay? Header requirements and ex extraction, query string deserialization, JSON and form bodies, multi-part form data, static files and directories, web sockets, access logging, gzip, deflate, and broadly compression. And then since it's built on top of Hyper, you have HTTP 1, HTTP 2, asynchronous, and then some other stuff that seem more like opinions than anything else. I could be wrong, but meh. So on the Actix side, Actix Web, HTTP 1, HTTP 2, which is here, Streaming and pipelining, not mentioned here, so that's one thing we have to note. Keep alive and slow request handling is also not mentioned here, so that's another thing we have to note. Web sockets, it's here, web sockets. Uh, compression, this is the Brightly, GZIP, and Deflate, right here, cool. Powerful request routing. I mean, outside of the word powerful, uh, that's here. Uh, where is it? Right here. Multiple part streams, multiple part form data. Not exactly sure if those are one to one, but I think they are. Static assets, static files and directories. That's the same thing. Um, SSL support using OpenSSL or Rust TLS or Rust LS, Rustles, I think it's pronounced. That is not mentioned here, so I think we're at four. And then we have middlewares, logger, session, cores, etc. Uh, it does say something about logging, but it doesn't say anything about these other things. So I'm going to put up another finger. That's, that's, I think that's roughly five things currently. Asynchronous, this is asynchronous. Supports Actix Actor Framework. That's not really a requirement for web frameworks. That just happens to be a feature of this. Um, let that slide. Runs on stable Rust. So does this. So I. Uh, doesn't really matter. All right, so there's about like five things roughly that we have to try to figure out whether or not Warp has them, and if it doesn't, then say it's a discrepancy, right? So let me go to my notes. I have notes on the topic where I listed out the um, stuff that was the features that were on Warp side, the features that were on Actic X, and then I put Xs next to things that were sort of questionable. So we have the streaming and pipelining, the keep alive and slow request handling. I gave a pass on that one. The SSL one was here. The middleware, and I think there might have been one more. Let me look at this list again. Oh, well, I guess we didn't mention the includes the async HTTP client. I mean, that seems a little out of the scope, but sure, I can mention that. No, I guess that was it. Cool, so let's go back to this list. All right, so one of the things that was mentioned was keep alive. Let's start with keep alive. So what is keep alive? Open a link. So uh, keep alive is a header uh, that allows sender to hint about how the connection may be used to set a timeout and maximum amount of requests. All right, so it's more or less a header flag to give some hints. 
it wasn't mentioned in Warp's documentation, or at least in the features list. But if we look through the docs for Warp, we note that they do have Keep Alive, and they have an example of how to use it. So that's one thing we could take off the list of being a discrepancy. And I'll put all of these links in the description of the, the video so you can see them and go back and reference them. But moving onward. So we did keep alive. Let's look at cores, because cores is mentioned right here in terms of middleware. So what is cores per se? So cores is short for cross origin resource sharing. Um, is a HTTP header based on mechanism that allows a server to indicate any other origin, domain, schemes, or port that its own that it owns from which a browser should permit loading of resources. Okay, pretty straightforward. It is header based. Um, so let's go back to my notes and I went through warp documentation and they do have something for cores and they have a cores builder forbidden. You could they pretty much just have this mechanism in it. I do not think, at least from what I recall, there is no examples of how to use it, but it does exist and the functionality is here. So again, that's taken off of the discrepancy list. All right. Logging was mentioned in both sessions. Sessions was a bit of an issue. So when I looked for sessions in Warp, I found a GitHub issue. And it notes two things for the most part. One being that when asking for the feature, it doesn't seem as though this is going to come directly to Warp because there are ways of implementing it that aren't that bad. And in this person's comment, they link to a GitHub example um, well, not as an example, somebody else's project where they implement sessions. And going through it real quick, and the way they went about implementing sessions is more or less detailed right here, where is we have warp any, so that means that anything you put on to tag along with this is going to match any warp path. They look for the optional cookie, which cookies are... I guess we haven't shown it yet, but they're in the warp documentation, so that's just standard. And then, and then, they take that cookie, if it's there, and then they do a, more or less a lookup from some table or database to figure out whether or not the person is here. Um, and they have their own little session framework, but more or less, it's. Sessions seem kind of like an implementation detail. Uh, it is not native to Warp, so I guess that could be counted against it in terms of discrepancies. But based on how large this code base is, and it's not all that large, implementing Sessions doesn't, it seems well within reach. It doesn't seem all that impossible. Also, if we go to this issue, there is a person that just released a Session module, and he added tests for Warp with it. So if you wanted to, you could also use their module. Uh, I did click on it and look at it for a bit. And the warp tests are not in main yet. They seem to be on a different branch, on this branch. So if I go to, sorry, not main. If I go to master, you get a 404. So that's still kind of a work in progress, which, meh. I mean, it's better than nothing. So sessions can be a little iffy, but they're doable. All right, the next one, we did sessions. Oh, well, logging is mentioned, but I think I should mention how logging is done. Because more or less, in Actix, logging, sessions, and cores are placed within middlewares, right? But in Warp, they don't explicitly state middlewares anywhere. Yet, we do have some of these things. We do have logging. We do have cores. And how are they implemented? Well, there's still a middleware, per se. But let me show you. So, like we, were, we saw with the uh, third-party example of sessions, 
in order to create a middleware, at least my understanding as of right now, you do a warp any, like you, they did here. And then you tie on with a with statement, at least for things like this. So if you do with log, then you have a log and the default log imitation is actually pretty cool. Uh, this is the custom one. Let me let me go back. So if I look at the source for this, you can see that when it logs, it it takes in an info and info has a lot of the information about the uh, the request itself. So it knows where it's coming from, has a method, has a path, has the version if you need it, status, and a few other pieces of information that you could just capture at this moment. Um, and if you wanted to write a middleware, I, I'm guessing a lot of this information is very relevant to what you want to manipulate or touch, or even log, in this case, log. Anyway, moving onward. Um, I did note the, oh, we haven't talked about OpenSSL and Rust TLS, or Russell's, because there's no extra T there. So Warp does have an example about that. It just wasn't mentioned in the the features list. And that's right here. So on the examples page, which I can just go to the examples page first so you can see it. They have a TLS and then in here is what I was about to show where it gives you an example of um, just using TLS, having the cert path and then the the path to the key. And it's more or less what they have here. However, I do want to note that in the ASTIC, ASTIC web version, they said supports OpenSSL and Russell's. Warp seemingly only supports Russell's. And here's what I mean by that. So if I go to this issue, where it states that in Fedora, we don't want to package yet another crypto library. Um, so we want to stick with OpenSSL as our TLS backend. It would be great if you could use native TLS for TLS implementation. Thanks in advance. It got a thumbs down. I didn't do it. But anyway, um, native TLS, which I did further information, look further into, is the like Rust implementation for using OpenSSL. Um, given that this is an issue, it implies that Warp does not support OpenSSL. So if that is a requirement for your project, then you just use something else. Oh, streaming. I almost forgot streaming. So streaming. Ah, so in the documentation, if you search for, in the Warp documentation, if you search for stream, it does pop up. It has both multiple parts stream, keep a live stream, and then body stream. And um, more or less, uh, it should be noted that, or it, we should recall that uh, Warp is built on top of Hyper, and Hyper has all of this basic functionality in it. And that's why Warp has it. So yeah, streaming is a thing. So going back to the list and comparing the two, it seems as though the out of the basic features that were listed on the crate.io page, only about two of them were a discrepancy. And that was open SSL support and sessions. In my opinion, that's not that bad, and that, that means they're pretty much comparable. Uh, one thing I didn't talk about, which I said I would, is the async HTTP client. So though that's listed as a feature here and not as a feature in Warp, we should recall, again, that Warp is built on top of Hyper, and Hyper has one. So if we go to Hyper, go to their home page, it's noted here that there is both a client and a server, and it is the client that I'm referring to. If you go to the Get Started, make it a little bit bigger. They have an entire section on the client. 
and the client is asynchronous. Though I do not think you have direct access to the client via warp, um, knowing that it's already a dependency in the project, using it directly doesn't seem as though it would be any different. Like it doesn't add any weight or like cruft to your project. All right, so overall, going back to the just general summary, there was only two things in terms of the discrepancy between warp and Actix web. So overall, I think they're roughly the same. To be clear, I think they're roughly the same from functionality perspective. In terms of warp, sorry, in terms of Actix web, you have to take in consideration the ecosystem. So Actix web, if you go to the GitHub page, right? Or well, go to the GitHub page for Actix. They have an, a, a repository of examples. And this examples list is long. It has almost everything that you would ever want to look at or think of doing with a web framework. And it's just here for you to review and use. To me, that's kind of crazy. And then down here, they have showcases of other applications that use Actix Web underneath the hood. And then they have a section for community examples, apps, and articles, boilerplate projects, stuff like that. And if you want to contribute to it, you can. Like Actix Web has a large community. At least that's the way it appears to me. Um, another thing that it's that should be noted is that the documentation for Actix, Actix Web, is beautiful. Like I, hold on, let me go to the basics. Like I took the time to read through all of this and at the end of it, I felt as though I could use this framework to do pretty much anything I wanted out of the box relatively quickly. Like I felt as though I understood how to use it and that's saying something. And the docs are just generally good. There is another repo of Actix Extras. And in this repo, it is dedicated to crates, both by the community and by the organization, that are made to uh, enhance your experience or to help you with functionality along the way. I mean, this is more than you could really ask for. This is, this is, all right, so from the standpoint of someone that is working on a project, they have a deadline, and they don't really care how it gets done. They just want to use something that has a bunch of examples, community support, and any issue you run into. Somebody probably already ran into it, so there's an answer somewhere for it. Then, yeah, Actix seems like the way to go. Yeah. Overall, this page is, the fact that this exists is impressive to me. It's kind of crazy. Uh, so overall, in terms of my comparison, um, I think from a functionality standpoint, Actix Web and Warp, pretty comparable. You just have to figure out how you, how to do what you want to do in those frameworks. Because in terms of the way they go about doing it, that is very different. Um, Actix Web's documentation is excellent. Just reading through it, I felt as though I understood everything like really fast, like I could build whatever I want immediately. And then the fact that they have uh, all of those examples and like extra functionality you can just pull in and use, that seems really nice. Um, ultimately, I think the difference between the two web frameworks is just community and presentation of how they give the information. But outside of that, functionality-wise, comparable. And with that, we've reached the end of the video. If you like the video, hit like, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. Outside of that, until next time. Peace.